Hello and welcome to the Joy of Development. I want to apologize for the delay on getting this video out there as I've been a little bit busy recently. Luckily this last step's pretty easy, so we'll get your procedurally generated levels up and running in no time. In the previous video, we filled in our room's floor and gave it more volume. Now all that's left to do is give it some walls. This will be the final step of the floor plan method, but if you want to stick around for future projects and techniques, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and smash that like button. So we have one last function here that I've named fill walls. We'll connect that to our sequence and then we'll jump inside. What we'll do here is for each placed floor tile, we're going to check its four neighboring tiles. If the neighboring tile doesn't have a floor, then we're going to need to place a wall. We'll start by running a for loop off of our placed floor array. We'll follow that up with a second for each loop, with this one using a local variable called adjacent tiles. This variable is an int vector array, and we're going to be putting four vectors into it. The order that we set these vectors up is important, because we're going to be using their array index as their rotation value. The zero index will be x minus 1 to check behind the tile. The first index will be y minus 1 to check to our left. Index 2 will be to check in front of us with x plus 1. And index 3 will check on the right with y plus 1. We'll take the location of our placed floor tile, and then we're going to add in the x and y value for our adjacent tile. We'll combine those values back into an int vector, and then we're going to check if placed floors contains the value. We also want to check if our door array contains our place tile location, and we're going to check it using our array index from adjacent tiles as the rotation. We also know we don't want to spawn any walls on the far side of a hallway. So if hallway is true and our rotation index is 2, then we don't want to spawn any walls. If any of these come out to be true, we don't want to spawn a wall, so we'll link them all up to an OR node and use the resulting boolean to decide whether or not we move on. If the result is true, we don't do anything. If the result is false, we want to add a wall. So from there we're going to use our check for wall macro. We'll be using our placed floor tile location and we'll be using our adjacent tiles array index for the rotation. Make sure to multiply both of those by your tile size and 90 degrees respectively. If everything comes back good, we'll spawn our wall instance. And just like in the previous technique, we'll be spawning a wall collision around it. We'll need to convert the location and the rotation to world space, and we'll set our instance's return value to the index of the wall collision. And finally, we need to add it to our wall collision array. And with all that set up, our floor plan method is finally complete. Let's preview the game and see how everything turned out. As you can see, everything's working great. All the walls spawned in appropriately, and now we've got a complex and engaging environment to explore. That's it for this video. We have more procedural generation techniques coming up in the future, as well as more projects. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you have any questions, or if you just want to participate in the Joy of Development community, consider joining our Discord channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.